All right, hello, welcome everybody to our first official board meeting of the school year. Woo! Um, before we get into the agenda items, I have a special note from a special someone. She is the former executive director, Ms. Kendall Inskip. I think she might be watching right now, so I had to give her her, uh, her her little credit there. Happy new school year! Just a sincere, I know Matt is like, is like Kendall, but I'll try. Just a sincere note to thank you again for a wonderful retirement party and a wonderful life career experience. Each of you have touched my heart to the core and I am a better person because of you. Please know I am cheering you on for another phenomenal year. Do not hesitate to reach out. Seeing your number come up on my phone will bring me great joy. Much love, Kendall. Yay. All right. Yay, we'll give a clap for Kendall. <laughs> I want to say she's here in spirit, but she's actually watching, so there's that. <laughs> Retirement fun, right? Okay, so let's call to order for 06, and we will start with roll call. Crystal? All right. Um, first on our list, we've got John Adunko. Not here. Michelle Anderson? Here. Brian Bosma? Uh, here. Christine Brown Callagher. Here. <laughs> Melissa Dedman. Here. Kaylin Evans. Here. Lauren Garfinkel. Here. Jabari Goodridge. Not here. Crystal Herrera Woodley. For the record, I'm also here. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria Mason. Hope everything's okay. Landon Miller? Here. Chris Morgan? Not here. Uh, Manny Ortiz? Not here. Ralph Rodriguez? Here. Dave Shantani? Not here. David Taylor? Here. And then our student representative, um, Tegan Richardson. Awesome. Perfect. She's oh, oh wishing her the best of luck. Nice. All right. Back to you, Lauren. Perfect. And a warm welcome to Brian and David. Um, I speak as well for everyone here that we're excited to have you guys. Thank you. All right. So um, items for presentation, discussion, information. Do we have public comment? <laughs> there we go all right good afternoon folks I'm Jeff Church I am your district a school board elected trustee so I just wanted to introduce myself I've come to meetings a long time ago but it's been a long time so I wanted to just come and say hi uh, for those of you that don't know my background I'm retired from the Reno Police Department I was a sergeant there I actually ran the homeless program for Reno PD for a while. Also retired U.S. Air Force Reserve, and um, I actually ran a 501c3 nonprofit homeless center as the board president. So that's a little bit about my background. The reason I bring it up is because I care very deeply about at-risk kids, which is roughly within your mission statement of what you do. Um, we're not doing well in Nevada. I'm not blaming the school district or anybody else. It's just we're not. Uh, how many of you knew that at Sparks High School, and I just picked that as an example, 48.3% 48, 48 chronic absenteeism? Now, if you're in the 12th grade, that's over 50% because it's the 12th graders that really skew the system. We've got a problem. We've got a problem. So, and it, at Sparks High School, 6.8% are math proficient to graduate, but yet they graduate. 85% graduate, but 6.8% are math proficient. District-wide, 26% are math proficient. Now, I'm, I'm no math whiz, but that's what, 74% not meeting the standards. So, and I think the problem is the at-risk kids. So anything we can do as a school district, anything you can do at the Alliance is much appreciated. Uh, I'm a big, big proponent of field trips. We have kids that have never seen the ocean, kids that have never seen Lake Tahoe. I grew up in a military background. I saw the world, but these kids have never been out of Reno. And you know, when they're at risk, if you can show them that world 
it can make all the difference in, in, in the world. Um, beyond that, uh, just again, working through nonprofits, working with the businesses, anything and everything you can do uh, as your board here to help these kids is just greatly appreciated. And again, you can reach out to me, you can find my email on the website, anything you want to talk about with education except for labor, uh, for now, anything you want to talk about, I'm, I'm open, I'm, everybody knows that I always respond to email, so I'm available if needed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other public comment? None at this time. Okay, perfect. Moving on to item 2.01, approval of the minutes of the June 8th, 2023 Education Alliance Board of Directors meeting. That sounds like it was forever ago. <laughs> um, has anyone had a chance to look at the draft? Is there any questions, any edits? No? Okay, I'd like to ask the board for a motion. Uh, I'll make the motion to approve the minutes from the June meeting. Wonderful. Landon Miller for the record. Brian Bosmo will second. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> perfect. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Should have done that the other way. Um, perfect. Motion passes. All right. Item 2.02 .02, presentation update of the 2023 2024 signature fundraising event. We got exciting stuff. <laughs> we do. Okay, so to date we've raised 77.5. If we get all of last year's sponsors to repeat at the same level, then we will be at 125.5. That's a little lower than what you guys may remember we raised last year because I'm not including a $15,000 grant. I don't know if we will be invited to apply for it again. Um, it's from an anonymous donor through the Community Foundation, so fingers crossed. Uh, we have room for 400 attendees la this year. Last year it was more like 200, I believe. No, 250-ish. Um, so we will have a few tables left, even with some new sponsors. Um, I need a head count from everyone here to find out who's coming, if you're bringing a partner, spouse, um, anything like that, because I don't want you to be without seats. So. Can I get a show of hands? November 4th, Convention Center. Okay. All right, everybody's in. We're in. Okay, you should be by now. <laughs> it should be on your calendars. <laughs> it really wasn't a test, it was a rhetorical question, but you know, a rhetorical um, head count. And Lauren will talk a little bit more later about the 100% giving award, because that will cover for that. Um, so we should have, like I said, some extra tables. And we weren't able to do individual ticket or table sales last year because we sold out so quickly. So we're going to get that live on the website soon. I still don't have a menu update from El Dorado, but I'm sure it will be delicious again. And those are my big event updates. Working with Channel 2 and the district videographer to make a Caring for Classrooms video that we'll show at the event. Thank you. Does anyone have any, they'd like to add questions, any other, I don't know. I have a couple of questions. Yeah. So originally you, Brittany asked us to be part of like certain tasks. Where, where, do, where does that stand? I mean, that's still, that's still a thing. Should we be on the lookout for special assignments here over the next couple of weeks or Still months? a thing. Um, I need to get our first event task force meeting scheduled. Um, it's been a little, little hectic at the office trying to be three people the last couple of months but oh that is another update i'm gonna go off agenda here we we hired an assistant and she started today her name is lindsay beck uh very sweet very eager to help so hopefully you guys will get to meet her very soon all right perfect God, I feel like we didn't spend a lot of time talking about that at all. But like, that's going to be our biggest, usually the events are like our biggest conversation. Um, I think I'm going to actually. Lauren, sorry to interrupt you. Real, yeah. real quick, what were the price on, I know it's on the website, the price for the um, tables again? We haven't set a table price okay. this year because um, it's going to hold 10 folks versus last year it was eight. 
Um, what, what do you remember? What I you think? think we were looking at 1,200 a table, and it's 10 people per table. Uh, last year was, I believe, it came to be like nine. I, I remember it was a little under a thousand. Um, how what it came to? So, just looking at um, other nonprofits and other events, and you know, to be competitive, but also you know, raise a little bit, considering we sold out so quickly. Um, I. I'm very confident it was 1,200, but 10 people at a table, where most events will be 1,200 for eight people. Mm -hmm. um, so still a good, you know, bang for your buck, I guess you could say. Um, and yeah. Kaylin, we can schedule a meeting to talk about a special WEA. Yeah, race, last like year last we year. just bought like a bunch of individual tickets. I don't know, like, I think it was like $5,000 worth of tickets just to give out to teachers to have them represented. So yeah, whenever we get a chance. I mean, I know you guys are busy, but just try to... No, that's Remember. hugely important, and yeah, mm -hmm. I've already got you guys penciled in for a few tables. So. Okay. <laughs> and to Landon's point, we will definitely be putting together a special task force, as we do for this, so we'll send out invites to the board if you want to be a part of that. Um, yes, the night of, slash day of, we will have fun assignments for everyone. <laughs> um, as we did last year, we definitely want to um, have as much board participation as possible, especially for the event, because it'll be Brittany, um, the new executive director, which uh, we'll touch on that in a little bit. No, we do not have one yet. Um, and our new um, our new uh, secretary. So um, we will need kind of an all hands on deck. But it's so fun, like if you're passing out raffles or doing the bubble machine like Ralph or whatever. <laughs> it's still great. Planning the, costumes Planning the costumes, yes, all that good thing. Good thing. So next board meeting, we will have significant, significant updates on that. I know Victoria will be reeling to share the menu, which mm -hmm. I can't imagine will be anything short of exceptional, um, and how she'll go into details of what the event will look like, how she promotes her team that does such an amazing job for that. So next meeting, look forward to those updates. And Lauren, just really quick for the record, Jabari um, did arrive at 4.09, and Chris Morgan arrived at 4.15. Perfect. All right, any other discussion on pure imagination? All right, moving right along to item 2.03, presentation update on the Caring for Classroom Special Funding Award. I believe Landon, yeah. have you taken that away? I'll take that away. So we do have some good news uh, for those who have not been involved in this conversation since June. Uh, our committee did meet about two Fridays ago, three Fridays ago at this point, and we were able to select five schools to divvy up the uh, $40,000 total. Um, so without going into too much detail, because we do plan on giving those awards out uh, later this week, actually, we're kind of wanting to surprise them. The awarding principals do not know yet. Uh, I would say that our committee, it was, it, was, it was kind of refreshing to see such a wide range of uh, different ideas, different proposals, and uh, different ways in which uh, they kind of touch on some of the pillars for our, clearing, our caring for classrooms. Um, so big shout out to Melissa. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Crystal, Christine over here for, for helping us uh, select that. The, the selection of the awards itself was a very uh, smooth process, actually. I mean, we all reached an, a, an agreement very quickly. Um, and reading some of the applications, I mean, if any of you guys wanna, wanna touch in on that. I mean, it was a, for me, the biggest thing that I got out of it, which was awesome, was to, it was a really good opportunity for me to hear from the principals and in the principals' voices, what some of those needs really are in their own, in their own words. And I feel like I haven't had that opportunity um, in quite some time to kind of hear the voices and the stories and the needs directly from the principal, uh, from the principals in, in my capacity here. So um, the ones that we selected, you know, if you want to know, we can talk after this meeting. I just don't want to say anything in in case it's because it is being recorded and whatnot. But um, it's going to be a, a great thing coming up on Friday. I think we've we've nailed that down. And um, yeah, we'll do three schools on Friday, and then the other two will wait. Um, Brittany, if you want, you can maybe touch in on maybe how that process might go on on Friday I mean if it, it's it's in terms of of how the teachers or the, the schools will be awarded how is how is that gonna work that's kind of cool yeah basically publishers clearinghouse will be <laughs> what we're going we're going in there as so we'll have a big oversized check um, some of the trustees are going to be joining we've got area superintendents joining so oh and then uh, channel 2 they're gonna be there not 
for the news, but for this, this video that will be played at the event. So we're really hoping to get excited looks from the principals, some surprise. It's been quite the challenge uh, trying to schedule school visits without telling the principal that you're coming. <laughs> So that's why there's still two we're working on. Um, but yeah, we're going, I think the first one's at 10 and we should be done around 1.30. And those other two schools may still happen on Friday. Yeah, uh, and, and again, I think if, if, you know, I think a few of us plan on going to that, but if anyone wants to join, you feel free to let me know and we'll send you those details as we get closer to, to Friday. Again, I it's well I can I'll tell you everything outside. It's not me trying to keep a secret, but it's more more so for the sake of a big surprise. That is what we are going for here for those principals because they're very uh, uh, deserving. They put some thoughts, uh, a thoughtful application process, and we're excited to to that. Um, but if anyone who was on the you know the selection committee or participated with me, if and if you guys want to share anything that kind of stood out to you during that, because I think it was a special thing. Yeah, I, I this is Christine Calgar for the record. I, I think what was really uh, special about the process was what we learned about our own rubric and our own matrix for how we're making those decisions. I mean, we had a whole bunch of amazing narrative when it came to, you know, schools describing what their need was going to be like, but we're thinking for next time because we, we really want there to be a next time where we're able to you know make these significant investments in schools um, to engage with the Washoe County School District uh, data department to to see how how they you know weight um, school need and and what other factors we might want to take into account um, to to measure impact and to measure need um, so I think that's that's a relationship I think we're excited to pursue for the future. I just say it was humbling to read everything and just to see how much need there really is, um, how all these principals took this time to, to make the request. And uh, so I, I just, I think it was great to be able to do something, but hard not to be do, not to be able to do everything. Um, one thing that kind of surprised me is how much need there is for copiers. I think there was at least two, maybe three. Just, just give me a photocopier, please. And I don't, I don't know if we know anyone in the photocopier business, but <laughs> if, if, we have, if we have a contact somewhere, there's some schools that would just really appreciate having a working copier. Um, I don't I know it, whether it's now or later, but I, of the five we chose, it might be nice to share why, we don't have to talk about why we didn't choose the others, but why those five we felt were a, a particular note, I guess, at some point. At today, no. yeah. Not, I don't want to do again. I don't want to do it today, just in case. But absolutely, y'all will know. Y'all will know on uh, Friday afternoon. I promise. At least, at least three of the five. And that's why we're gonna have the, the videographer there to kind of to capture it. And whatnot. Make it a whole special moment. Yeah. yeah. That's that's another quick question. Is is it possible to to get news coverage about the distribution of funds? I know this you know particular filming crew is is doing so for. Um, for the event purposes, but is it, are we, are we able to send out a press release and garner some coverage there? Yeah, we can, we can definitely send one out. Um, sorry, I'm just thinking about the, those who were not chosen, mm -hmm. but um, yes, it would be exciting for those who were. Yeah. Yeah. I think that might also be a great way to plug in our upcoming fundraiser too. Yes. Like we, we need donations like this to continue to foster and help. Yeah, so I think we can probably work with Michelle's team um, in getting something crafted and, and sent out, I think would be great. Um, and just so everyone knows, I, there was a little under 40 schools that applied and there was 87 pages that we went through. <laughs> Um, with the these principals really advocating for these schools so um, even if we only were able to choose a few um, absolute gratitude for these principals taking their time uh, to present as to the needs of the school and again to the points of this whole board it really raised or the board that <laughs> we made the decision it it really raised that awareness of the needs within the schools especially the printers I was like what and how expensive they are like they're not cheap so that that was definitely <laughs> <laughs> an eye opener for me. But if you think about it, that's like the heart of a school. How are you going to give tests without 
<laughs> no copies. Yeah. Everyone gets iPads. Just kidding. <laughs> That's the university. Where's Dave Shantani? Where's Dave Shantani? They all get iPads. Um, okay, perfect. Well, if there's no other discussion, we'll move on. Okay, item, item 2.04, presentation and update on teachers' warehouse events. Brittany? Uh, if everybody can help give a round of applause to WEA and Panasonic, please. <laughs> Thank you, WEA, for sponsoring food. It was quite delicious. I actually got to eat this year. And Panasonic, not only did they help us volunteer at the Community Donation Day, um, but they gave us a $5,000 gift from last year that we used to purchase brand new supplies for teachers. So really, really made a, a big difference. So they weren't getting thrift store type of items. <laughs> uh, and we did get a lot of positive feedback from the teachers. We got great press coverage on it. All the local channels picked it up. We did two radio interviews. Um, and then we have a new partnership with Spread the Word Nevada. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that group. Um, they basically ensured that students who would not normally have at-home libraries have books. And they're helping us just go through the massive amount of books that we get and determine what they can get out more quickly to students versus what will be helpful for teachers to have in the teacher's warehouse. So. Great partnership, and they had a table at the event, so that was, yeah, it was a good time. Any questions on Teachers Warehouse? Any feedback? I did want to make a special mention that McQueen High School had some football players um, in attendance helping. Um, was oh, yes, it for inventory. for inventory day? Did they behave? Yes. <laughs> Very sweet. <laughs> Because I've got some extra conditioning. If this <laughs> <laughs> extra laps, perfect. All right, and thank you, Brittany, for coordinating everything for that. Wow, I think this is going to be the fastest meeting in the history of meetings. Let's keep it going. All right, um, item 2.06. Oh no, 2.05. Um, presentation discussion of Ed Education Alliance Strategic Plan 2021 through 24. So Brittany and I kind of chatted about this, and of course we'll open this up to the board, but knowing that we have an impending new um, executive director, we kind of want to shelf this discussion um, until uh, that person is, is hired so that we're not creating something and then having something different. So just wanted some feedback from that. Um, everyone has access to the strategic plan if you want to review it yourselves. Um, and then we'll probably create another special forces um, team for that uh, to discuss as we have. I know, Melissa, you've been a big part of that along with Chris. So any feedback for that? Any, any opinion? Or Yeah, I think it's a good idea to uh, wait until the new director comes on board. And I'm happy to, to lead the group again or participate as, as needed on, on that special team for it. Perfect. All right. Okay, item 2.06, this is kind of Boom. weird. Kendall's probably watching like, what? what's happening? She's probably shaking. Um, <laughs> a little more direct. Yeah, right, right, all right, so item 2.06, presentation discussion and update on the structure programs and working groups from the Education Alliance for the 2022-2023 school, 2023-2024 school year, <laughs> um, including board member spotlights, um, giving board and update from the Washoe County School District. So let's start, and I know you have Tegan's updates. Do you want to read hers first? Yes. Let's go with that. <clears throat> okay, this is verbatim. Tegan said they are not in session yet. To, for those of you who don't know, she is our student representative. I don't think you all got to meet her at the last meeting. Um, she, gosh, I think she's going into her, her sophomore year. She's at her driving test, that's why she couldn't be here. <laughs> We're wishing her all luck um, so she can drive herself to and from these meetings. Uh, so she said they are not in session until September, but they did hire a new student voice facilitator. Her name is Caprice Young, uh, and they're very excited to work with her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they're working on implementing smaller councils at every high school to make sure all voices are heard across the district. So. We will look forward to having her at the next meeting. Perfect, and thank you, Tegan, if you are watching this later today. Um, she said she was going to, 
So I'm like, all right. Um, so board member spotlights. Today we have Michelle Anderson and Brian Bosma. We're gonna do rock, paper, scissor. Who goes first or what do we want to do? Alphabetical? What, are, what do we want? <laughs> So you get to choose. You choose. All right. Perfect. <laughs> okay, Michelle Anderson. Uh, for the record, I think some of you know my history, but I'll go over a little bit of it. Um, so I am a proud, born and raised in Reno, Nevada, and a proud graduate of the Washoe County School District. Um, I went to uh, Donner Springs. Uh, then to Vaughn Middle School and a graduate of Wooster High School, go Colts. <laughs> <laughs> and then also uh, went to the University of Nevada, Reno. Um, growing up, my dad always stressed the importance of loving what you do for a career because you spend your majority of your time at work. And so you need to feel passionate about it. You need to enjoy going into work uh, every single day. Um, I will say I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with my career early on. I was a substitute teacher uh, for the school district when I was going through college. Um, obviously had several other jobs. Um, and then when I graduated, I really thought I wanted to be a police officer. Um, I had worked public safety dispatch and was a dispatcher for years here locally for all of our agencies um, and then transitioned over to the city of Reno um, where I ultimately was the lead communicator for the city. At that point in time, they did not have um, uniformed um, public information officers. Um, and so I covered all of police, all of fire and city council. Um, and I will say one of my most favorite things uh, to do when I was there is really highlight the great work that was being done that a lot of people don't always realize behind the scenes. So sometimes it was the snowplow driver, it was the street sweeper, um, it was um, all those great public servants that were really making our community better. Um, and so I fell in love with that and that is why I have evolved into education. I think it's telling the story um, of obviously our teachers, but it's also our custodians, our, our um, uh, coaches, our um, principals. Um, it is somebody that's over in academics behind the scenes or our accountability office and I love telling that story. Um, it, like I said, I, I'm just extremely passionate for my community, I'm passionate for public service. Um, and I love getting information out to our families um, and our community on ways that they can be engaged. Um, the mission statement. Uh, uniting our community to illuminate and, and clear pathways for every Washoe County student's brightest future. And uh, we're supposed to answer one or more of these questions. How have you applied our mission recently? And I will say I do it in every, every day, um, it is part of my job. Um, our department, um, and I'll, when I give an update of the school district, um, we just um, approved, a, our trustees just approved our strategic plan. Um, and every time we start a meeting, we are mentioning what, um, what our Washoe County School District promises and how our department, how we're connected to that. So I may not every day be working in a school, talking to a student, but I am highlighting their stories. I am connecting families with the school district, trying to make it more accessible um, so students and community members can be involved in our children's education. So um, just love what I do. Love that. Thank you for sharing and we appreciate you on this board as well very much. Brian. And I want to go on the record by saying I think I got cheated in paper, rock, scissors. No, I can't. <laughs> um, yeah, good afternoon. My name is uh, Brian Bosma. I'm the vice president um, at the Reno Sparks Chamber of Commerce. Um, you know, very kind of intriguing how I wanted to approach this. Um, kind of to Mr. Uh, Jeff's church point, you know, I really think that accountability doesn't happen from grades. It really happens from your peers and I kind of wanted to to tell my story about that. Um, so I went to Galena High School. Um, you know, a lot of the praise in high school had to do with uh, the sports that you played, but I would say probably the most important thing was my involvement in extracurricular activities in Washoe County. 
Um, I had the honor in qualifying in back-to-back -back years at nationals for speech and debate, um, leading the school local chapter as president to back-to-back -back years at nationals for future business leaders of America. I was able to geek out and design and write for yearbook and newspaper as an editor for those. And those extracurricular activities really allowed me to really pursue my degree um, at Liberty University in Virginia. Um, you know, I would honestly say my GPA in grade school and high school was average, but by applying myself beyond the classroom, I was able to find success and opportunities in college and beyond. And I would stress this with every student that I talked to and I helped mentor that by really involving yourself in um, the clubs and programs you have offered at your school that you really kind of create this sense of worth, not by what you get on your you know, assignment, but by that accountability that you get and that you create through your peer group. Um, you know, the Education Alliance mission statement is uniting our community to illuminate and clear pathways for every Washoe County's student's brightest future. Um, you know, and this mission statement to me means that every student is unique and has many opportunities to apply their unique individual talents to create a successful life. And I encourage every student who I come across to use these um, activities as a way to really apply themselves beyond the classroom and into, real, um, into, real, into the real world. Um, yeah, and so kind of how do I use this mission statement to my day-to-day? -day? I look forward to apply that, um, that mission statement on this board, but also working on the board of directors for the Nevada Youth Empowerment Project by working with at-risk youth to really kind of show them the way that you don't have to be a traditional student in essence. And to Mr. Uh, Jeff Church's point, you just got to show up. Showing up is half the battle. And if you're really able to work with your student peer group, if you're able to work with your teachers, try and find those avenues that really interest you because you're not going to find success in this world by what you get on a math test, but by how you apply yourself. So um, I really like to stress that with the students I come across. And I look forward on serving this board with everybody here. So thank you so much. And again, the warmest welcome. We are excited to have you as well. Um, okay. Well, we're going to jump back over to Michelle <laughs> for the update Michelle, for back to you, uh, back to you. <laughs> uh, for Washoe County yeah. School District update. So uh, first update, I'm sure all of you are eager to know about the Education Alliance director position. And so we have it still open. We have narrowed it down to, um, I obviously don't want to give the number of candidates, but we have a number of candidates that we will be scheduling interviews in the coming weeks. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to secure who that uh, individual is to fill the big shoes that Kendall uh, left when she went to retire and sit on the beach. <laughs> um, uh, but um, Brittany has done an outstanding job, obviously, in holding the fort down as um, we have been without um, a, our leader. And um, we obviously have just hired the secretary, hired Lindsay for that. So that's that little update. Um, we have started the school year off, as you saw, great. Um, hopefully you're following the district social media channels. We have some amazing um, highlights of those first day of school, first day of kindergarten, first day at incline. Um, and then, as many of you know, um, we are, have wrapped up with our district strategic plan. So we're getting ready to launch that. Um, the agenda item for our last board meeting, it was pulled because uh, staff felt that it needed a little bit of work, but those excellence targets for our strategic plan um, are going to be presented to the board in the coming weeks. We don't have a date yet on that. Um, I purposely brought for all of you guys our strategic plan a little fold out so you have our five goals and the pillars that are associated with it. Um, what our facilitator kind of explained and when I pass it out you'll be able to see it. The five goals are strong start for every child, student voice and advocacy, safety and belonging, academic growth and achievement, empowering all learners for their future. And then the excellence targets are how are we going to achieve that? And like I said, that'll be brought to the board as those are finalized. On the back is our promise and everything that we do, we will um, hopefully de we will deliver on this promise. We will know every student by name, strength, and needs so they graduate prepared for the future they choose. And we'll, we will deliver on this promise in partnership with our families and community. Underneath that, you're going to see our pillars and what they've described those as the goals are really focused on students, so student-focused, 
the pillars are what we as adults and as a community and as families, what we need to have in place in order for our goals to be successful. So when you look at the strategic plan or look at this little card, that will make a little more sense to you. In the coming weeks, when we have the um, excellence targets outlined, uh, we will have a fold out that will have Dr. Enfield bringing out to those community members, and then we'll have the comprehensive plan that will ha have everything in there. So uh, more details to come, and I'll make sure Sure that as we have those documents uh, produced that I share it with the group. Um, so I think it's a perfect time as we're looking at the strategic plan for Ed Alliance to be able to align with what um, these are. Um, and every department is going to be coming up with their own mini theory of action or strategic plan on how those departments can support um, uh, the district strategic plan. What are we doing as departments to make sure we're ensuring that? And then as you all know, schools have their school improvement plans, again, supporting the district plan. And that's all I have. Thank you. Any questions, comments? Um, I just want to commend the school district for the process of creating the strategic plan. Um, it was an honor um, to to be part of that process, to be a community group member, um, working alongside so many phenomenal educators and fellow community members and others in the nonprofit sector on that process. It was probably the most collaborative process, and I will promise you that the dialogue was rigorous and respectful. Um, there, was, there was a lot of uh, really thoughtful consideration down to individual words, um, a lot of wordsmithing, uh, but because words are significant and these words are going to carry and guide the school district for years to come. And so the school district is to be um, commended and congratulated for an amazing process. And I know, uh, Michelle, you were a huge part of that. So big, big kudos to you as well. Um, cur I'm curious about whether or not the Ed Alliance board is going to be involved in the selection of the new executive director in any capacity. Absolutely. Um, I'm actually trying to outline what that process looks like. So right now, hopefully no one's watching that has applied, but they may. Um, the first um, is going to be narrowing it down the candidates so that we get to those top candidates. That second phase is when I'd like to invite uh, members of the board, uh, I don't know the number yet, to be part of that process, um, along with uh, a representative from the superintendent's office, and then obviously leaving it um, uh, up to Dr. Enfield for that final decision but absolutely I think that is extremely important I just have in the process haven't identified how or what that looks like but um, more to come and on that uh, do we have a tentative timeline of what that looks like um, I know that's probably a loaded question at this point but in terms of like a potential start date of what of what we're thinking uh, have not gotten down to the details. The only thing that I did do on Friday was make sure to notify the candidates because as we know, it's been open for a little bit and the last thing I wanted to lose was some excellent candidates that have put their name in. I will tell you they were all extremely excited and happy to be moving forward. Um, I had just said I knew it was gonna be you know, a two-phased, possibly three-phased um, interview process and they said they wouldn't expect anything less um, and so they were extremely happy about that. Perfect, that's great news, wonderful, thank you. I answered my question earlier. Um, okay, anything else for Michelle for updates? No? All right, well, I think last, but certainly, this is crazy. <laughs> uh, Melissa, I mean, in the history of this, this is crazy, but we'll be out of here Five five. That's that's wild. Um, all right. So last but certainly not least, um, 100% giving board. Um, that deadline is October 13th. So no donation um, is too big, too small. However, I wanted to note that for the night of pure imagination, if you were to buy a table with your company or yourself, or if you want to maybe go in on a table, that that will count towards that. Um, just wanting to make sure that everyone knows that. However, if you are going to go that route, Brittany and I would very much appreciate it if you could let us know before October 1st. That way there we can, since the tables, we will hopefully have them posted, but again, we have, you know, question mark. We, we want to account for the board first to make sure that those tables are there. Um, and then, uh, you know, be able to 
make sure that for the giving board that we're able to record that before the submission date. So um, you can reach out to us separately um, if you'd like, but we saw everyone's hands, so everyone's going. <laughs> <laughs> so again, just an opportunity for that giving board to be able to um, utilize that for that. Do you have anything you wanna add to that? Check is preferred. <laughs> Which I don't have any checks anymore. You're such a millennial. <laughs> like a checkbook. I'm like, huh, I don't know. But I guess I'll, I'll, I'll go order some. A cute little print. You know, 49ers print or something. <laughs> What's that? Oh. Where is it? This. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know for the November meeting, that's normally our mixer meeting. Um, Victoria just informed me a couple hours ago that El Dorado will be hosting again in their panoramic boardroom. So all those fun goodies we got last year, we will be getting again. Wonderful. Well, um, I guess on that note, we'll... I, I seriously feel like we're missing something, but hey, you know what? This is a great first board meeting because... Sometimes these meetings go a little longer, my new friends. So um, here we are. But hey, I guess, um, yeah, next board meeting will be October 9th. Um, we, and that's not November. That's going to be here again, correct? Yeah. Yep. I'm here in the same room. And um, October 9th. October 9th. The November one will be at the panoramic, panoramic room um, as last year. But okay. Well, <laughs> nothing else. Um, it is 4.46, and this meeting is adjourned.